Good evening and welcome to another installation of A Man for All Seasons with Pastor Randy Dixon. I'm your host, Justin. And I'm your hostess, Mandisa. And as Justin said, we want to welcome you all back here another night. I must say, we missed you all last night. We missed you all. But we're so happy that you all can be here with us tonight. Yes, yeah, so we're pretty excited to have you uh, this Tuesday evening. And um, thinking about Tuesday, isn't it something that you want to share with them? Yes. We like to think of this Tuesday as Thankful Tuesday. Thankful Tuesday. So seeing that it's Thankful Tuesday, what are some of the things that you have been thankful for today, uh, this week, or even this month? Just put it in the comment section so we can all share what we have been thankful for uh, this Tuesday. And you know, thus far, we have all enjoyed the presentations by Pastor Dixon. We've learned who is this man. We've learned to see even this man, and we saw this man. And tonight, we're going to hear another message about this man for all seasons. I can't wait, Mandisa. I cannot wait for what is, what is for us tonight. So we want to encourage you to share that link with that friend, with that family member, so that they too can be blessed by tonight's power-packed message with Pastor Randy Dixon. But just before we continue um, our session to this evening, we'd like to offer you and your household a special word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the blessings of this day. We thank you for carrying us safely through it. We ask, oh God, that as we come together now to hear another message from your man servant, we pray that our hearts would be receptive. May you be with everything that is done and said here tonight. In your most holy name I pray. Amen. And amen. And so we'll be blessed with the prayer team, the A Man for All Seasons prayer team. So we do hope that your hearts are blessed and you sing along. God has indeed been great to us and we are so grateful for the experience we've been having thus far. Don't forget to share this live. Tell a friend about it. God is making a way in every season and we're so grateful for it. So as we worship him, share, remember to share. Write something you're grateful about and share your testimony of how God has made a way in your life. Be blessed. Up and you made a way 
relationship with you. We want to be more like you. We want your Holy Spirit to fill us, Lord, so we can talk like you, walk like you, move like you, touch lives for you. And we're so grateful for this opportunity to worship in your presence. We're inviting you to sing this song with us. Holy Spirit, rain down. And I pray that you make this your prayer wherever you are today.
Hey, good evening, good evening, friends and guests. Oh, we're so happy to have you this evening here. And this is your promotional nugget. And just remember, we have all the links in store for you. Just remember, talk, log into those, to those links. And remember, I want to let you know that one thing we have offered for you tonight, remember those um, books we talk about, those free books? Yes, you have one additional book tonight. And that book this evening is entitled, Is It Easier to Be Saved or Lost? Yes, it's only for tonight. So get on that link right now and download that book so you can have access to that. Yes, it's only for tonight. Is it easier to be saved or lost? You have the additional two books, which is The Desire of Ages and, of course, Steps to Christ. So we are happy to have you. And just remember also, we have in store for you those counseling sessions. You know, sometimes you go through those depressing situations, anxiety. You may have marital problems. You may have children problems. So we have our confidential counseling sessions that are available for you. St tune into it. Log into it. Send your information onto it. And so you can have your, 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 your problems, whatever situations you may experience in, you may have someone there who is confidential listening to your, you and your, um, your problem situation to help you to solve it. So just remember that the counseling is available for you. And not only that too, but we have the prayer room. Just remember, the prayer room is on every evening. And so you could tune in on the prayer room section, log on, talk with them. You can log on, you can share your prayer, and you can understand the other prayers of other persons, and you have a good time there in that prayer room. I'm telling you, stay tuned, log on now. Invite your friends, invite your family members. Don't let anyone be left out. Get in tune with, the prayer, with, with that prayer, um, prayer room. And also, we have for you, um, not only that, but we have also, we want you to know that they are decision cards. Some of you are in the Valley of Decision. You would have heard three nights so far. And those are that impacting messages that you would have heard from Pastor Randy Dixon. Hello. Listen, let me tell you this. If you are making a decision right now, if you are contemplating making a decision, I want to let you know that the Lord Jesus Christ is standing at your side so you don't have to worry anything don't worry about our friends don't worry about your sister don't worry about that family member that decision is between you and your christ so get on tune with that um with that decision card and go on the link sign up and be ready for that also remember thursday evening are our youth we don't want to leave all the youths because they are our future. So just remember, our youth are very important. The youths, they are very important. And we have wonderful messages for our youths. So just remember, invite your friends and your youths and your young children. Have them sit along Thursday evening so that they will not be left behind. We want to leave no one out. I am going to be there, I'm telling you that. So just remember that. And in spite of all this COVID, this COVID business, listen, even though they are COVID-19 and they are Delta experience, listen, we have the Jesus experience and we don't really care about none of that. So, okay, so we have that. So remember, all our programs are on at 7 p.m. nightly. But just remember, Monday night, like last evening, I know some of you all would have tuned in. I know that because it's so exciting that you tune in. But Monday evenings are our rest evening. Yes, I myself almost made a mistake. Right? So just remember, you have out of this 14 nights, we have three nights gone. Tonight is the fourth night. And so we have 10 more sessions. Remember our Sabbath sessions. They start in the morning. So it's tune in Sabbath morning to get all this information. <laughs> listen, I am so excited. Huh? Listen, tonight's message. You don't want to listen. You don't, you listen. Hmm. Of all that I said, this is one more one important thing. Tonight's message. Choosing this man. You would have heard all before. But the night message is entitled, Choosing This Man and Pastor Randy Dixon have already given us all his information on how, to, on how to see this man, how to know this man, how to believe this man. So tonight, we're going to choose this man, Jesus, okay? And what a wonderful experience we are having, friends, all our guests. And hear what? The information is not for you alone. You have the opportunity to share it with all your friends, call your family members, and share it. Thank you very much, and you'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Did you know 
that salvation is as easy as ABC? A. Admit that you have done wrong things. The Bible says in 1 John 1 9 that if we admit to our sins, He will forgive us or show mercy and He will make us clean like we have never sinned. B. Believe that Jesus came to die in our place. The Bible says in Romans 5 8 that God loves us so much that He planned to send Jesus to die for our sins even before we were born. C. Confess that Jesus is your God and commit your life to Him. The Bible says in Romans 10 9 that if we accept Jesus and believe in Him, we will be saved. As Christ's representative, the truth I intend to give, and if you intend to live, then I suggest you don't be tentative. This message is urgent for each and every single one of God's servants. I mean, we need to open our eyes and be observant. How long will we be deceived by the serpent? The enemy uses entertainment as a distraction and a deterrent. No wonder Christians nowadays more washed up than detergents, yeah. We need to put on the full armor of God. That's something we must implement. Don't forget the shield of faith to stand against the fiery trials and incident. Really sort of the spirit in your hand to be the devil pan like a national instrument. I mean, we're supposed to be spiritually hard, but it's sad, we're impotent, we. A lot of Christians don't want to read the Bible. They say too intricate. They don't want to get into it. But to have a relationship with Christ, it must first be intimate. You know when putting your hands in the oven, you got to put your fingers intimate, wait, wait, wait. That was wordplay. So let me break that down. Proverbs 18, 21 says, The power of life and death is in the tongue. Therefore, all your relationships are formed by talking. All your friendships are formed by talking. So if you want to have a relationship with Christ, just have a conversation, but do it often. Repent for all the stuff you was involved in. Give yourself as a living sacrifice and as an offering. He will send the Holy Spirit in your life to start morphing. He will lead you out of the spiritual coffin till the devil gets sick and literally start coughing. See, sometimes I know fighting the enemy could be exhausting. Every now and again, you'll feel like you're lost. But you need to stand on the promises of God. Otherwise, he will leave you stone cold like Steve Austin. Yeah. That's how the enemy does operate. Try to shake your faith until it fluctuates. If you are Christian, you will suffer hate. They'll try to drag you through the mud until you suffocate, but it's no debate. Christ will lead you through the proper gate, and until then, keep watering them seeds until it propagates. See, we live in the modern day Sodom and Gomorrah, the aura, feeling like a new world order. Some of these preachers big capping like they're wearing a fedora. Meanwhile, we spiritually poorer. They start heart shattering, earth scattering, diaspora. On the way to Babylon when they read from the Torah. So, throw away your philosophies. Throw away your Einsteins and your Socrates. One day Christ will bring an end to all of the atrocities. So I suggest you just repent and drop to your knees. invite all your friends as wherever you are you can kneel reverently if you're standing we want you to be reverent right now as we offer prayer eternal God and loving father we are indeed thankful we are grateful oh God that we are here in the land of the living in spite of all the tragedies in spite of all the negative circumstances you, we are happy that you would have chosen and selected us to be here but father God is we are indeed grateful that you have chosen a man, a man in Pastor Randy Dixon to present to us, Lord, to point us to another man, Christ Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that your spirit would fall upon him. We pray that your spirit would, would reach the homes and the hearts of all our friends and our guests who are tuned in at this special time. We pray, O oh God, that they bring that day as they listen to the words of God of this prayer, they would even go into the prayer room and they would even send up those cards right now where they will make that final decision for eternity. We pray, oh God, that whatever problem, situation that people that may, they may be experiencing, dear God, that you would help them 
that you would bless them oh god that you would sanctify them that you would heal them you would separate them oh god out of this world and that, and that they would see christ and christ alone no matter what your problem situations that jesus christ is the man for your problem today just pour it on him forget that friend like who can't help you forget that family member who can't help you talk to jesus so we will lift up pastor dixon at this at this special moment of jesus Oh God, you have elected him, you have nominated him, you have granted him the privilege to be here. And Lord, we pray, oh God, that your spirit would touch his lips, that he would speak nothing of himself, but only for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.
and welcome back to our program here. We're glad that you would have joined. Um, how are you enjoying it? If you're enjoying this program so far, put amen in the chat and let others see that you have been blessed so far. Haven't you been blessed so far, Sister Manisa? Yes, I have. And I especially like the two items of music. The first one that told us that Jesus made a way. And he didn't just made a way, but even now he is making a way. For everyone who might think they are stuck, Jesus is making a way. And above all, above all, above anything that you might think, Jesus is here for you. Amen and amen. So tonight's topic is a very interesting topic. Choosing this man. And now, with my interactions with young persons and just people in general, I've seen that persons would have chosen the wrong man. Mm. And then on the other side of the spectrum, I've seen persons choosing the correct man. True, Justin. And you know, there are some things that stand out about this man, Jesus, that can make us realize that he is indeed the right man. We know that Pastor Dixon showed us that Jesus lived a life very familiar to each and every one of us. He can relate to anything that we might be going through. Also, we've seen that Jesus loves us. He loves us with an everlasting love. And thirdly, that Jesus wants to be our friend. He wants to have a relationship with us, Justin. And all these qualities would make him the right man for us to choose. Well, that sounds like a man to have. Yeah. That is man. <laughs> all right? A man for all seasons. And so, as we're, coming to, as we're going to have that, that, that topic, uh, choosing this man with Pastor Ronnie Dixon, just before he comes on, we would have uh, our theme song by our praise team, Jesus at the center of it all. Beginning to the end, it will always be 
Good evening. Good evening again. And it is good to have you here again. I know we missed uh, last evening. And as Elder Van Roy said, he went looking for the link last night. But last night was the off night. But we're here again tonight to continue our series. I know that we're busy. I know that there are many things happening. But I want you to just share the link. Invite a friend, invite a family member. Um, this program is just about an hour, maybe an hour, 15 minutes. I want you to let your friends know just to give God an hour, an hour and 15 minutes. This hour, or this hour and 15 minutes, it's the best hour and 15 minutes they could give God today. And this time could change their lives. This evening, we continue A Man for All Seasons, and we are at episode number four. And episode four is a crucial episode. It calls us to make a decision, not thinking about anybody else, not thinking about anything else, but just making Jesus our priority and our focus. Our episode tonight is entitled, Choosing This Man. Choosing This Man. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this time and this opportunity to present your word. We thank you for being a good God, a great God, a daddy to us. And even now as we spend this time, bless us. Hide me behind your cross. May your spirit speak through me, Father. May you empower me, may you transform me, and may we all watching, listening, tonight or even later, be transformed by this word. Choosing you tonight, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's, let's go through our previously on a man for all seasons. On Sunday, we saw Jesus going out of his way. Jesus going out of his way to make a way for a woman in Samaria. We saw that when this woman understood who Jesus was and what he was really offering her, she left all that she had in her hand. And she ran back to the people of her village, telling them, come, see this man. We saw a woman who was once alone and sad, depressed and bitter, ashamed. She, she's in hiding, hopeless. Oh, she immediately changes into someone restored. Her self-respect, her purpose, her hope, now all restored because of this man. What a wonderful experience this must have been. I, I, I want to tell you, I, I can't explain it. I want to let you know I can't explain how this change happens. It is, it is, it is, there's no science. There's no formula. There's, it's just amazing how Jesus changes us. Just by one encounter. I cannot explain how a murderer begins to read a Bible in prison, somebody, and accepts Jesus. I, I cannot begin to explain how a, a, a naked man finds a Bible in a cave and becomes an international preacher. How, how does a man forgive a drunken driver who has killed his wife and children and then begins to mentor this same man, young man, and adopts him as his son? I can't explain it, but that's the difference that Jesus makes. All that has been broken. All that has been taken away. All that has gone because of pain and anger. All that has gone because of regret, guilt. All that is lost. When you meet this man, this man for all seasons, your life has changed. Jesus will go off course and pass through your Samaria just to make a difference in your life. I have seen him in my life. I have seen him in the life of so many others, and he can change your life tonight. Encountering him, knowing him, is a wonderful, wonderful experience. Wonderful. You know, it is amazing how Jesus, how easy Jesus has made this tonight. How easy he has made it for you to choose him. <laughs> it's interesting because now online you don't have to comb your hair. 
You don't even have to take a shower. You don't have to leave the house. I mean, you should take a shower, but for the crusade, you're not leaving the house. You don't even have to leave your bed. You can have a snack in one hand and your phone in the other. And you can make a decision for Jesus. You can click that link and make the best decision of your life. There's no application form, no reference, no experience needed, no bank account. Just click that link. Call that number and let us walk with you through this amazing, amazing journey with Jesus. Oh, Father, someone is making that choice now. Give them the strength. Give them the victory. The victory is already won. Jesus has won the victory. It's not, we are not fighting to win the victory. The victory is already won. Uh, Jesus is in charge. Captain, heavenly host, lion of the tribe of Judah. He has already won the victory. Choose him. Choose him right now. Choose him right now. Choose him right now. I, I, I want to make the appeal. No, as we start, so that you don't get distracted. Your phone doesn't die. Your internet doesn't cut out. Click that link and choose him now. Let's get into our message tonight. Tonight we are going to, to look at a story that is familiar to us. And maybe not the story itself, but the story of the story. What the story is saying, it's familiar to us. And we're going to turn our Bibles. Matthew 19, 16 to 30. And you should see, you should see it on your screen. 90, uh, Matthew 19, sorry, 16 to 30. Uh, it's about a rich young ruler. And I'll read in your hearing. And someone came to him and said, Teacher, what good thing shall I do to obtain eternal life? I'm reading from the Amplified Version. And Jesus answered, Why are you asking me about what is good? There is only one who is good. But if you wish to enter into eternal life, keep the commandments. He said to Jesus, Which commandments? And Jesus answered, You shall uh, not commit a murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. You honor your father and mother and love your neighbor as yourself. The young man said to him, I have kept all these things from my youth. What do I still lack? And Jesus answered, well, if you wish to be perfect, if you wish to be perfect, sorry, go and sell what you have and give to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me, follow me. But when the young man heard this, he left grieving and distressed, for he owned much property and had many possessions. Jesus said to his disciples, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, it is difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easy for, easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. When the disciples heard them, they were completely astonished and bewildered, saying, then who... Who can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With people, it is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Then Peter answered, say, answered him, saying, Look, we have given up everything and followed you. What then will there be for us? And Jesus said to them, I assure you, I most solemnly say to you, in, that the, in the renewal and read, sorry, Sorry, when the kingdom of when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you will sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or farms for my name's sake will receive many times as much. It seems that this guy. It seems that this guy has had a good life. And so, he comes to Jesus, banking on his life. This guy had a good life. This guy, a good family. And so I don't continue calling him this guy. Let's call him Cuthbert. I'm not sure if Cuthbert is a good Jewish name, but we'll call him Cuthbert. So Cuthbert had a good life. Cuthbert came from a good family. 
Cub's birth came from the good side of town. He isn't from Nazareth. He came from the good parts. As a boy, he goes to the best private primary school that money could afford. He learns well. He goes to the best secondary school in the country. He gets the best lessons and has the best tutors. He goes on family vacations every year and travels the world. His family, a good Jewish family, they teach him about the commandments and the Torah and it's implanted in him that it is necessary to learn them well. As he leaves secondary school, he attends the best university. He earns his degree and his master's, and he now sets up his own business, and he is super successful. He's doing well. He gets all the big cabin milking contracts. He gets all the sheep sharing contracts. He gets the building contracts. He gets the temple maintenance contracts. This guy is rich. And by the age of 24, he's accomplished. He is not just intelligent. He's a handsome fella. He's good looking. He reminds me of Van Roy. Handsome. The ladies have their eyes on him. But he's already chosen. He's already with another. He's married. Nice girl from a nice Jewish family. Everything is great. This guy is set for life. But every day after the long business day, after he sits and he closes his eyes and he thinks about his day and he reflects on his life, after he thinks, after the reports come in of how the stocks are increasing, how the properties are expanding, he is appointed to, to be the honored guest speaker of this year's Camel and Sheep Association Awards. He's recently elected as the youngest director of the board for the Jerusalem group of companies. After all of this, he's still empty. He still feels that void, the same void that the woman at the well felt before she met the man for all seasons. The same void that each person feels until they connect with Jesus. You see, it's called the God void. We all have it. Because of sin, there is a void that only God can fill. And the devil knows this. The devil knows this and, and he tries to, to help you fill that void. But with everything else, he, 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 he tries to help you fill that void. And he says, well, you know, you can fill that void by going to partner, from partner to partner. Uh, make mon more money. Make money, make more money. Go from bears to punching. Go from one promotion to the next. Go from one church position to another church position. From degree to degree. But it is never enough. You are never filled. And anyone, anyone, I dare you know, to say that what I'm saying is not true. If I'm saying something that is wrong, you can type in the chat, liar. Anyone who types liar in the chat, please remove them, okay? Thanks. Because we have all experienced it. We've all experienced it. And even if, you, even if you think I am lying, I'll tell you that you're lying to yourself because we have all experienced it. Over and over, we see rich people, famous people, people who seem to have it all. They never really do. Because outside of Jesus, that void cannot be filled. All we are doing is filling with dirt and, and backfill into a bottomless pit. Because only Jesus can fill that. And now Cuthbert sits on his balcony. He's on the third floor. He's overlooking the entire city of Jerusalem. He sees his businesses in the distance. He sees the properties. He sees everything that he has, but he is empty. He looks at his children playing in the yard. His wife by the pool. Servants all around. Still empty. His mind now wanders off to some messages and some stories that have been coming to him about this new guy. This new guy teaching new things. He hears of miracles and, and this guy is talking a lot about a new kingdom. He's talking a lot about uh, this perfect kingdom. and He's talking about eternal life. And as the night continues, he continues to think on this. And the next day, he seeks out this teacher. 
He gets the news from a servant, servant that Jesus is in some deep conversation with some religious leaders, some lawyers. Uh, this rich young ruler, Cuthbert, goes out to the scene. Jesus is engaging. He's in discussion. And when he's finished, he smiles at the children and he brings them close. He, he prays and he plays and he blesses them. And he waves, good, he waves goodbye to the children and Cuthbert runs to him. Cuthbert runs, catches up to him and, and, and gets straight to the matter. What good must I do? He asks Jesus. And Jesus says to him, but really you can't do anything that is good because only God is good. You see, he wants Jesus to, to, to list the good things so that he could uh, take out his tablet and begin to check the boxes. But Jesus knows where he's going. Nothing good we have for all that we think is good when it comes to eternal life is worthless because we can do nothing. We have nothing. We can bring nothing to the table to save ourselves. Only Jesus Christ can do that. And Jesus continues, well, you know, really, if you want eternal life, keep my commandments. He's happy to hear that. Woo, keep my commandments, yeah. Which ones, which ones, tell me, Jesus. And Jesus gives him the list and Cuthbert begins to feel good again. Well, I have kept all of those commandments. From the time I was a boy, I was keeping those commandments. He's thinking, well, good, I can check my boxes. But then Jesus sets the real test. This is not like any other test he has done. This is not like any other business decision he has made. This one is the real test. This one is about to separate the sheep from the goat. This one is about to separate the two humped camels to the one hump from the one hump camels. Separate. Jesus says, good. You have done well. Nice. But you're still lacking something. What do I lack? What can I lack? And in his mind, he, he begins to replay all that he has done, all that he has accomplished, all the people he knows, all, all the riches he possesses. He, he begins to think, well, I'm a good businessman. I'm a good to the community. I'm a good husband. I'm a good father. He can't think of one thing that he has left out. And Jesus looks at him with compassion, with love. He says to him, well, sell all that you have. Give it to the poor. Come follow me. He turns pale. His jaw drops. His heart begins to race. He has to make a decision. He has to decide on earthly riches or heavenly treasures. He has to decide on this earthly uh, temporal life or eternal life. Fleeting happiness, eternal joy. What will he decide? He makes the decision. He walks away, grieving, distressed, disappointed. He thought that what he owned, he thought that all he had possessed and all that he had done was enough. But what Jesus was asking was too great. He was not willing to part with the wealth. He chose money. And this life over Jesus and eternal life. I want to stick a pin here. I want to let you know that Jesus has nothing against wealth. Jesus has nothing against you being successful. Throughout the Bible, we see uh, wealthy kings. We saw wealthy men. But their wealth came because they were obedient to Jesus. They put him first. The wealth was not priority. The wealth was just a byproduct because Jesus knew that they could handle it. They made Jesus number one. Abraham, Jacob, Isaac, David, Job made God number one. And he blessed them. Jesus had put this young man's priorities to the test. And he failed. For Jesus was not his priority. And Jesus turned to the disciples and he said, well, it is difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom. The disciples now, they are lost. Well, who can be saved? You see, in, in Jewish thinking, when you were doing well, when you were healthy, wealthy and prosperous, it was a sign 
that you had favor with God. You remember Job? His friends came and said, well, you, boy, you, you lost everything and you're sick and this is happening because you probably did something wrong. Probably because you sinned. Because in their mind, connecting and having a relationship with God meant automatic prosperity. It meant that God was happy with you. You were doing well. This is very similar to the prosperity gospel that we have today from many churches. So a seed. So a few thousands of dollars and, 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 and you will be blessed and you will prosper and, and this is going to happen and, and people are sowing more seeds than the Trinidad agricultural sector. And the only person benefiting is the collector of the seeds. Uh, people are being made to believe that God's presence in your life can only be seen if you drive a fancy car. If you have a certain house uh, or if you're in a great position. But Jesus says, I, I, I don't really look at the outside and what you have or what you possess. I care about what's inside. I care about your commitment to me. I, I, I don't want to hear about what you possess. All I want you to possess is salvation. The rich young ruler, Cuthbert, CEO of Cuthbert Global, leaves sad, depressed. He has chosen the whole world while losing his soul. Uh, this story presents to us some real challenges some people are facing as they're making that decision to follow Christ. And quickly, I want to go through them. Cuthbert is rich. But money, the only thing money guarantees is material possession. It doesn't guarantee loyalty. It doesn't guarantee friends and commitment. It doesn't guarantee salvation. For sure, you can't buy your way into heaven. And COVID has showed us, COVID-19, this great pandemic has shown us that it doesn't even guarantee you control over your own life. For in COVID, we were all in the same place. Some may have had better food to eat. Some may have been entertained by a bigger screen TV and more channels. But we all longed to see our families. We all longed to line with our friends. Rich or poor, we didn't get to say goodbye to some of those loved ones. We were all stuck inside. The reality is, whether you owned a, a, an Audi or Mercedes, a Kia or a Tida, a red Suzuki or a blue Ford, a horse or a donkey, a bicycle or a scooter, we were all indoors, yeah. stuck. Money didn't give us freedom. We were just stuck in a nicer house. Stuck. And in some cases, we were more miserable in the mansions than those who were living in the shacks. Money didn't bring happiness in some families, like just playing some dominoes and drinking some cocoa tea. This guy was rich, but lacking. He was rich, but he knew that something was missing. He was young. And this is a big one. Because our young people believe that because they are young, they have time. And the devil likes to hear that. This time is the right time. The devil says, gives you this big lie. Why are you going to give up partying now and liming and drinking? Why are you going to give up all the girls and, and the sex and the popularity? Why are you going to give up all of that to follow them old people in church? You see how them just look? Do your thing now. You have time for this Christian thing later. You have time for God in a couple years, 10 years, 20 years. You have time. Forget that. Don't listen to that pastor. You have time. Enjoy it today. You will do that God thing later. Lies. The enemy is telling our young people lies. I want, to, I want to let you know, young people who are watching, young people are dying every day. Yeah. There's no age. Yeah. Once upon a time, you would think, you may hear a young person die, and that's a, 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 a far, few in between. Young people are dying every day. Yeah. Young people are making bad decisions that affect them 20 years down the road. 
Young people, you are not exempt from the enemy's attack. And you need to choose Jesus. Now, Ecclesiastes 11.9 says, Rejoice, young man, in your childhood, and let your heart be pleasant in the days of your young manhood. So enjoy your life. And walk in the ways of your heart. Hear this. But know that God will bring you into judgment for all these things. You can have a good life, but have it with God. Choose God first. Ecclesiastes 12.1 goes immediately and says, Don't let the excitement of your youth cause you to forget your creator. Honor him in your youth before you grow old and say life is not pleasant anymore. Jesus is inviting you to experience him now while you are young, while you have strength and energy. Don't give the devil the best years of your life and think that when you are old and weak and tired and sick and sick, that you're going to give Jesus the little leftovers. The energy that you have now, the intelligence, the strength, this all comes from God. Because God is the giver of life and the sustainer of life, not Satan. Give it to God now. Uh, the devil, he rewards you with sickness. After a premarital sex, he rewards you with sometimes a disease. After drinking, he rewards you with kidney and liver failure. After, after womanizing or manizing, he rewards you with a bad reputation. After crime and passion, after playing the devil's game, he rewards you with regret. Ask the older ones. Ask them. Find out from them what they have benefited from being in the world. Nothing. Nothing. All the people tell the young people the pain and the crying and the guilt and the regret that you faced as a young person living without Jesus. Tell them it's not worth it. And unfortunately, we have some older folks. Some older folks who lived a bad life, life full of regret and leading young people down the wrong way. When I was getting married, an older family member, a close family member called me and said, what are you doing getting married at 29? What are you doing? You have your whole life ahead of you. There are still many girls to, to talk to. Give it a couple more years. Who was I waiting for? I was waiting for, what was I waiting for? I was waiting for, for, for what? An STD or I was waiting to have some children with someone I barely knew? I was waiting to have some man chase me down with a cutlass? What was I waiting for? The best decision I ever made after choosing Christ was marrying my wife. Twelve years later, going strong in Jesus' name. Amen. It is ridiculous to see some of our older uh, males out there still trying to, to floss. I don't know if floss is still a word, young people. Still trying to floss and, and posing, looking for young ladies. Relax yourself. Go home. Take out the dentures, put them to soap. Follow your knees and call on Jesus. Uh, we have some, some women claiming I don't want a man. It is all about my career. But when you get old now, you want to be like Stella. Some of you may not know who Stella is. Or you want to, you want to become Lady Cougarar. Go home. Wash off the powder. Remove the eyelashes. Look in the mirror and know that you are a daughter of a king. And give your life to him. Young people, don't waste your time playing the devil's game. Your youth is to be given to God. Watch how God will take you to places that you have never thought possible. You are not too young to serve God. Because you are definitely, 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 definitely not too young to serve the devil. This rich young ruler, he has power. He is a ruler. He has people doing what he wants. He says to do this, and they do, do, do it. He says jump. They say, yes sir, how high? He can't give up this power. He can't give up this authority. 
He, he is the one who gives orders. And following Jesus means that he'd be taking orders. He can't let that go. Some of us hold on to power. He is self-reliant. He doesn't need to rely on anybody else. How do I give up all that I have owned? How do I give up? I don't know what tomorrow will bring if I follow this man. I want to let you know. You have heard it. I have heard it. And it sounds like a cliche, but it's the truest of cliches. You see, I may not know about tomorrow. I may not know what tomorrow brings. But I know once I am with Jesus, I know that my tomorrow is secure and my tomorrow is safe. Because I may not know tomorrow, but I know who holds tomorrow somebody. He is in my tomorrow already. And he has already orchestrated and ordained what my tomorrow is going to be. Whatever it is, I don't care because Jesus is going to take care of it. I don't need to be the boss. I don't need to be the ruler. Because Jesus is in control. He is owner. He is the CEO. He is the operations manager. And as long as he is in control, as long as I surrender my control to him, I have nothing to fear. Give up that control. Give it to Jesus because you're really not in control. You are not controlling. I tell you, Bajan, you ain't controlling nothing. Because, listen, you couldn't even go and buy a doubles without the government's permission. And then when you try to make the doubles at home, it come out like tacos. You're not in control. Give up the pride and let Jesus be in control. Finally, this young man, he was religious. He knew the scripture. He obeyed the law. And that is good. Jesus said to him, well, keep the commandments. We're going to cover this. But it went beyond that. Uh, the com keeping the commandments had to be found from a place of obedience and surrender, not from a place of habit and tradition. Jesus wanted him to keep these commandments not from a, a legalistic place, but from a place of relationship. Too many times we think we can be saved based on what we are doing, based on what the pastor tells us to do, based on what the priest says, based on what the preacher says, but Jesus requires that we know him for ourselves. Jesus wants us to experience him for ourselves. Our experience is not based on our pastor. It is not based on the priest. It is not based on the pundit. It is not based on our parents. It is based on our own unique experience with him. Jesus did not condemn the fact that he kept the law. Jesus condemned the fact that he thought that the law was enough to save him. Jesus said the law is great. But when you experience me, you will understand the freedom found in these commandments. When you understand my character, you will understand the, the abundant life that I promise you. Follow me. Experience me. Jesus says, follow me. Isn't I will be walking a few feet ahead of you. It is I will be walking next to you. We will be walking together. I will be holding your hand. I will be guiding you through this journey. It will be hard sometimes, but I will always be with you because I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Jesus doesn't call you to follow him to leave you alone. Jesus doesn't say, follow me. And you know, sometimes when husbands and wives go walking or go in town to shop, the, the wife is all up there. And the husband kind of tagging along and trying to catch up. It isn't that. When he says, follow me, he's with you. When he says, follow me, he holds on to you. He takes your hand. He's with you in this journey. Yes. Tonight, it may be difficult to choose. You may be in that valley. It may seem hard. You may be thinking, I have to give this up. I have to give that up. I, I, I can't make money the way I used to make it before because of this. But Jesus is going to provide all that you need. Amen. And tonight as we close, tonight as we make another appeal, tonight as you receive another invitation to Jesus, 
I want to encourage you to choose this man. Choose this man, Christ Jesus. Choose this man, a man for all seasons. Choose to follow this man. Choose to leave, leave it all for him. Like the woman at the well, two decisions. The woman at the well, the rich young ruler. Who are you going to be tonight? Leave that bucket. Leave the cup. Leave the guilt. Leave the shame. Leave the regret. Leave the past. And choose Jesus tonight. We're closing. The disciples are worried about their condition. They have left all for Jesus. They are not sure what their future would hold. What is going to happen, Jesus? We've sacrificed everything for you. We've left the fishing boats. We've left the, the, the fish. We've left uh, the making money from tax collecting. We've left it all. And Jesus says to them, listen to me. I'm not going to leave you out. Listen to me. Anyone who has left houses and brothers and sisters and mother and child and farms and business and, and money and, and, and position and education and uh, boyfriend and girlfriend, anyone who has left all for my name's sake will receive many times as much and will inherit eternal life. Jesus has made this promise. Whatever you have to sacrifice tonight, I promise you, I guarantee you that it will be worth it. What does this world really offer? Riches go or you go and leave it. Youth goes, you get old and you die or you die young. Position is temporary. You are the president or CEO today and tomorrow a younger version comes and replaces you. You are now ours. You learn all the scripture, you have all the positions, you know all the commandments, but you are not transformed. You have never experienced Jesus. All you are is a noisemaker, a party favor, just blowing hot air and making noise. My friends, the time is tonight to be serious about Jesus. I ask you to let it go. Let it go. Choose Jesus tonight. Click the link. Make that decision for Jesus. Call the number. Make that commitment to Jesus tonight. Even as I pray for you at this time. Our Father. Oh, you are God. You are in control. Your word stands forever. And Father, you've promised that when we choose you, you will walk with us. When we choose you, you will never leave us. And Lord, you, you know that it comes with some earthly sacrifice, but Father, you've promised us that there is so much more that experiencing you and, 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 and trusting you is so much more than what we could ever experience here on our own. The devil is a liar. He just wants to destroy everything that we have, everything that we're holding on to, like this rich young ruler is temporary. It goes, money goes, houses go, car. That goes, even our life will go at some point. But oh Father, tonight we know that choosing you is eternal. We know that choosing you means eternal life. And even here on earth, amazing benefits. Because Father, you will always be with us. Father, you've promised to keep us, to hold us, to be with us. So tonight as that person is clicking that link as that person may be fighting in their minds what do I do do I click and make that decision for Jesus do I choose Jesus, Jesus tonight or do I hold off for another night you don't know that you have another night choose Jesus tonight choose him now father we thank you for hearing we thank you for the power of your spirit as it goes through and, and goes through these houses and, and goes through these countries as people make decisions for you tonight. Bless them. Hold them. Keep them. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Wow, what a powerful message uh, with our pastor. And you know, it kind of struck to me, huh? we, we tried and we chose everything else. And tonight, pastor would have shared, let's try and choose Jesus tonight and onward. And you know, he was especially speaking to you young man or you young woman to make Jesus a priority in your life. Don't think that you have time that is one of the greatest deceptions of the enemy, that as a young person you have time to choose Jesus today. Let's have a relationship with him because he is longing to have a relationship with you. As tomorrow is not promised. And so talking about tomorrow, what is tomorrow's topic? <laughs> tomorrow's topic is like this man. Like this man. All right, so... We have been blessed tonight, and I'm sure that you have been blessed tonight so far. And tomorrow promises to be even greater. And so, as we, we end tonight, we want to remind you that the greatest announcement that the world has ever had is that Jesus is coming soon.